Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at a cool way of making scales, or something like scale mail for fantasy miniatures. So before I do anything else, this is not going to be using arrays, which is obviously a totally viable way of doing things like scale mail, it just gets a little tricky to put them onto then undulating surfaces and things like that and making it look right. But it's just whether all that time is going to be particularly worth it for what you do, but also bringing everything together to one mesh can also be kind of problematic it just takes a lot of time, whereas this is going to be a much simpler, but still really effective method. So first of all, I'm going to explain how these tools work, because otherwise it's very difficult to see them as you're doing this to make the scales or the scale mail. It's much easier to explain this independently and then create the scales. So we'll do that first. If you want to skip past that, there's times in the description or you can use chapters if you want to, to have a look at that. So do feel free to skip forward, but it's not going to be explained later what I'm doing. I'm just going to talk about the keys that I'm using to do it, whereas this part will explain it. So for this, I need a plane. I'm just going to subdivide that plane up, trying to keep everything as square as possible, making sure I apply the scale, and then I'm going to use a multi-resolution modifier so that I've got that to a finer level of detail. Once we've got that sorted, tab into sculpt mode, and if you don't have that because you haven't got machine tools, then you can always just come up here and go to sculpt mode that way. And we've got our tools on the side here, but we're not actually going to really use those tools. We're going to use one that's a little bit hidden, but it's to do with masking. And to do that, all you do is you hold your mouse over a part of the mesh, and we're going to do what is called an expand mask. And the way this works is you hold your mouse over your mesh while in sculpt mode, press shift and A, and that's going to start making this mask. And you'll notice it moves out in a circular fashion. But you can change this by pressing the numbers, so that is the one key. The two key is this more diamond pattern or sort of square pattern rotated 45 degrees, so you can play around with those. Now if we start doing that again, there's some information on the bottom of what you can do with this, but not all of this is shown, especially the ones that are gonna be the most important for this. And that one is that you can create a repeating pattern if you press the W or Q keys. So I'm gonna press the W key. I apologize, this can't come up on screencast keys because of the way screencast keys seem to work in Blender, which is annoying. So that's me pressing W. And if I keep pressing W, that's gonna make them go smaller. So basically you get a smaller repetition. Whereas if you press Q, you're gonna go the opposite way and make them larger. So you can do that as you want. And then you pull in and out with your mouse to change how much of that is going to be masked. And if you ever go past the next line, it starts again from that line. So that's going to be really useful for this. The other thing that we're going to use is the gradient toggle. So if I press G, you can see what that's doing is now creating a gradient where from each of those repetitions, it's got more of the mask. That's the darker color. And as you go towards the edge, it's got less of the mask. And again, this is going to be really important. And then you click to confirm what you want. So this is the tool that we're going to be using to make this work. So I'm just going to undo that. So what you need to do is you need to start in one of your far corners. And if you see, the middle of your cursor does slightly snap to each of the individual vertices that are there. So I'm going to go to the furthest corner, just there, and then I'm going to press Shift and A and drag out. And you'll see we can't see anything here. I don't know why that seems to happen for mine, but as soon as I hit 2 or 1, we've got our different options here. Now we're going to use the 2. Now originally this was a diamond shape, which we don't want it as a diamond shape. We're just using it because it has this sort of 45 degree angle. Now what I'm going to do is zoom out a bit so you can see more what's going on, and I'm going to start that again. So go to the corner, shift A, drag out, and then press 2, and then that will create this pattern. Then I'm going to press W to get a repetition of that, and I'm going to keep pressing W until I get it as fine as I want, remembering that we're going to go basically all the way to that edge. So that would be the size at the moment. Each of these black sections is how wide one of the scales is going to be. So I'm going to press W till I get to about, let's say, there. That's probably about good for me. Now I'm going to press G to bring the gradient. Make sure my mouse is as close to the next line or the start of the next mask as possible. If you go past it, it's gonna start again. So get it as close as you can and then click. And that's confirmed that mask. Now we need to do exactly the same on the other side. So go to the furthest corner possible, shift A, drag out two, press W, and then try to get it so that your sections are about the same size. So for example, here, that's looking about good there, I think. We can change this later as well. So I'm gonna press G to input the gradient, and then I can still press W if I wanna make that a bit less, or Q, and I think about there is right. 
So that's what I want. And then I'm going to click once more. And we've got this masked off. And you can already see how this is going to work. We've got these areas which are lighter and that's going to come further out. The areas that are darker are going to remain where they are. And once you've got that, all you need to do is go to your mesh filter, make sure your type is set to inflate, and then all we're going to do is click and drag. And you can see we've made our scale mail. Now do note that each time I drag across, you can see this going really pixelated and then converting back. That's because that's the multi-resolution modifier. That's how this would look without the multi-resolution modifier. That's with the multi-resolution modifier. So you can see what that's doing. And if I undo that, if I want it a bit further, I could always drag out a bit further. So there we go. A really, really quick way of making these diamond pattern scales, which I think looks awesome, really nice and fantasy. Now, there is a limitation to this. We can't really use this to make these more rounded scales. So do be aware there are limitations to this. But what's really nice about this is that if we put this on a curved surface, we will still get a really good result. So let's show how this works in a real example. So I've brought in this model by La Stormy. It's on Thingiverse for free. I'll put a link in the description and it's pretty cool. But let's say I want to add to this. Let's say I don't want this sort of six pack showing. I want to put some scale mail there as if this is all fully armored. Though I think realistically you wouldn't have scale mail with some plate mail over it. But you get the idea and this will be a curved surface to be able to look at. So all I'm going to do is bring in my plane again, R and Y, and then 90. Let's G and Z that up to get it into place. And we're just going to approximately get that into the correct location. Let's S to scale that up to probably about there is what we're going to need, but not as much on the Z axis. So let's go to about there. Then Control and A, apply the scale, go into edge mode, Control and R, to make something that's closer to a square, so something about there. In fact, actually, that doesn't work that well. Let's try there and then there. That's better as a square. Again, this is not essential, but it does make everything work a little bit better. Then I'm going to A, Control and E to subdivide this, and we're going to probably want something about there at this point. Then I'm going to try and bring this or get this to the point where it's to shape. So I'm going to select that edge there. I'm going to make sure my proportional editing is on. G and X that out. So I've got something to about there. Let's bring that one in. So G and X there. And then we can start worrying about these edges. So there and there. And then G and X and take those in. And I can control how much this is proportional editing with my mouse wheel. So I want something about there. That looks about right. I just think that edge there is going to need to go in a little bit more. So let's G and X that to about there. Okay, so we've got an approximate shape. It's not perfect, but the important thing is here is that this is curved. And we've tried to keep everything relatively square. In fact, I'm going to put an extra edge loop there and an extra edge loop there so it's still relatively square. Now at this point we have a problem because I want to use my multi-resolution modifier but if I use my multi-resolution modifier and use simple it is going to keep everything very very squared off. So I don't want that, I want this to be more smooth to begin with. So we're just going to use a simple trick that we'd normally use as well for other sub-D workflow. Remembering multi-resolution modifiers are a bit like adding sub-D but it's on top of the low poly mesh. So all I'm going to do is go into edge mode shift and alt select all of the outside edges shift and e to crease that and now when i add my multi-resolution modifier i can just use the normal subdivide and that's going to look really smooth without getting rid of the pointed tips to each of the corners so we've got that there now let's add in the scales so tab sculpt mode go to the corner shift and a and drag two to get that in we want w to sort out the size of our scales. G, so we can see the gradient, and I'm gonna to go to about there, I think. We want these decent size, so let's go to about there. Drag my mouse so that the gradient is as far as possible, close to the next edge, click, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite corner. So Shift and A, drag. Oh, notice I wasn't close enough to the corner there. You can see that because we've got this horrible section there. So let's undo that. And actually, I wasn't perfect on that one either. So Shift and A, drag, 
to W. Let's drag that back into about there. G. And then let's one more thing. That's no, there's about right. And then click as close to the line as possible. So there we go, we've got our mask gradients. Let's come out of isolation mode and we can see where that's gonna be. Yes, that's about the right size that we want. We've got our inflate brush on. So all I need to do is click, drag forward to there and we've got our scale mail. So a really nice quick technique to get scale mail on curved surfaces. You can see here, I've gone slightly off this bit sticking too far out. So let's go into vertex mode and grab that G and then Y that back. Let's turn on proportional editing to about there, back into object mode, and it's moved the scales with it because of our multi-resolution modifier. That's why we like a multi-resolution modifier. So hopefully you'll find that process useful. If you did, or you just found it interesting, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and if you want to support the channel further, we do have a Patreon page where I'll put this file up so you can have a look at it if you want to. And once again, all credit to the Stormy for this sculpt that I've added this to. Have a great day, guys.